Hey guys, I'm almost ready to show you this really cool prototype Apple Macintosh Quadro 700. You know, the same computer that was in Jurassic Park. I just have to win the eBay auction and then it will be mine. Thankfully, my new clone Ken is helping me snipe it. All right, clone Ken, what's the status? Hold on to your butt. Uh, 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 you didn't say the magic word. Gosh dang, uh, uh, I hate this hack of crap. No, someone sniped us while you were diddling around. Look. I can't help it sometimes. I'm just really good at hacking, and sometimes I hack myself. I'll be back with you guys in a sec. Sponsored by Linode. Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and we lost. I wanted to show you this really cool, really rare Apple Macintosh prototype, but we didn't win the eBay auction. Hey, Ken. What? There's another one on eBay. Should I get it? Yeah, do it. Hold on to your butts. Stop saying that. All right, we got it. I chose the yesterday shipping, so it should be there by now. Oh, perfect. Well, now that we have this in the layer, let's take a look at it. Oops, uh, Ken, there's one problem. What? Well, it's for parts are not working, so it might not work. What am I paying you for? You don't pay me sh Fair enough. Anyway, we've been through worse before, so we'll just have to make do with what we have. It'll be fine. Right? Here it is, everyone. The rare Quadra 700 prototype is finally here. The same model of computer that was in Jurassic Park. You know, the movie where Nedry was talking to someone over a live feed and it was just a pre-recorded video file? Yeah, movie magic. It was the early 90s, it's fine. So before we dive into this prototype more, a quick history about the Quadra. So the 700 was the first model. This is the beginning of the Quadra line. It was the first Mac to ship in a tower style case, which was really just a 2CX case flipped vertically with the labels rotated. And at launch, this was a $6,000 computer. It has a 25 megahertz Motorola 68040 processor, and it could support up to 68 megabytes of RAM. I have more than that on my wrist today. We have a lot to be grateful for. So the eBay listing said it's for parts are not working and that it's untested. I don't want to be a Karen here, but if I were selling this for upwards of a thousand bucks, I would take a little time out of my day to test the thing. But hey, what do I know? So let's take a look at some of the distinguishing features of this prototype that you don't see on the public retailed version of these computers, and then we'll see if it works and see if there's anything on the hard drive. So apparently this thing was codenamed Spike. I think that's kind of a fitting codename for a computer that was used in a movie about dinosaurs. Huh? <laughs> so that's kind of fun. And on the back, it also says PVT, which is production validation test. That's a later stage of prototyping. And depending on the situation and depending on who you talk to, some people may not consider that a prototype because the computer at that stage is nearly complete or sometimes complete and ready for retail. I've heard stories of some companies selling PVT units if stock is low. And here's another unique thing about this case, and you might've already noticed it. It doesn't say the name of the computer on the front. That's another telltale sign of prototypes, at least in the Apple world. Sometimes when Apple does placeholders, they'll do X's, for example, like on the PowerBook XXXX. However, that other Spike PVT prototype that was on eBay actually had the name silkscreened on the front, but that was likely a later stage computer, and we can deduce that by looking at the serial numbers. My buddy Steve from Mac84 looked up the serial number and cross-checked it with the one on eBay. Thankfully, the seller had a photo where you could see the serial number. There was only a one letter difference from this prototype and that prototype. So that owner likely received both of these prototype units at the same time. This model is slightly older than the other one on eBay. So that could be a reason why this has an incomplete name on the front but the other one has the name on the front. Back to the serial number super quick, when you look it up, you'll see it's from early August. And that's another great indicator that this is a prototype because these didn't go on sale to the public until October. And another thing that always gets me curious is when you see a peeled label, it makes you think what was there before? It's definitely bigger than the typical like Apple asset tag labels. So yeah, not sure what that could have been. All right, let's bust this, oh, it's much heavier on top there. So let's bust this baby open and take a look at the insides. It's actually not too dirty. Obviously there's a lot of dust here. We'll wipe that out soon. But uh, let me take you on the 50 cent tour. 
Here we have the power supply. Here we have the hard disk drive. Under there, I'm assuming is the floppy disk drive. That's our Motorola 68040 processor. That's the CPU with its nice heatsink. Apple isn't a big fan of fans. They'll have a fan in the power supply, but that's it. There's no other fans in the whole system, just a heatsink. Hello. You see what I see? No, you probably don't. I'll bring you in closer. These are the ROM chips. So that's July 19th, 1991. The ROMs were made a whole month before the serial number date. So that's kind of cool to see those earlier dates on there. This is actually different. These are soldered on ROM chips. The other one on eBay had a red ROM stick in this slot. It's a little disappointing that I don't have a cool red card in here. It's just blank, but it's also cool that it's different because in that unit, those onboard chips aren't soldered there. Anyway, continuing with our tour, Here's the RAM. It looks like there are underneath here four more RAM sticks that are occupied. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna give it a quick uh, dust in here before we get too far. I forgot to get excited about this. I was so busy giving you guys a tour, I didn't even realize there's a freaking hard drive in here. A lot of times when I get prototypes, not only do they not work, but they usually, they either don't have a hard drive or they have a replaced hard drive. This looks like the original. It says EEPROM 1991. And I'm not trying to be a downer while I'm dusting this thing, but typically internal information would get purged from a prototype system in advance, but not always. And sometimes there are other weird ways internal software leaks, like in my iMac episode with that build of Snow Leopard. There was a lot of internal stuff on that computer. I will get the rest of that caked in dust in a sec because we have to take this carrier out because the battery needs to be replaced. This is just good practice. If you have an old Mac, it's probably a good idea to put a new pram battery in there. Batteries will corrode over time. And if they leak, some people say it's a matter of when, not a matter of if, when they leak, they will F up your logic board. So it's best to just take them out and leave them out if you're gonna put them into storage or at least put in a fresh pram battery. And if you need to get some fresh ones, I have a link in my description. And I also recommend having a battery tester for two reasons. One, you can test to make sure the battery you just purchased isn't a dud, green, that's good. But also you can test the old battery, which we'll test the old battery in here, just to see if it has any juice left. Well, I found a popcorn seed. I have no idea what the heck this is. We'll save that for later if anybody's hungry. Power supply has to come out, but thankfully this is quite modular. You don't even need tools. It's not screwed in. It's just like held in with friction. There we go. One power supply box, complete with fan. We'll uh, dust this bad boy off a little bit later. There's a little tab right there. And then the one Phillips screw we got earlier there. There we go. The battery, which looks like it has a date of March 1991 on it. So it's over 30 years old. We should probably take it out. Little flathead screwdriver on the positive end of the battery here. Poker in and the plastic case should just pop right up. Should just pop right up. <laughs> there we go. Now let's take a look. At a quick glance, I don't see any corrosion. For grins and giggles, let's just see how the charge is. I'm guessing after 30 years, it's not gonna be very much. It's saying replace the battery. Should we follow its advice? Yes, of course we should. Yeah, we'll take that out of there. We'll pop that in there. Okay, feels secure again. So now I'm going to just, <laughs> where's my trusty towel? Wipe down this dusty stuff and uh, put it all back together. Ah, nice and clean. We'll plug everything into it, turn it on, hope it works and see what's on that freaking hard drive. Okay, we're all set up. I paired it with the Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2 and the Extended Keyboard 2 and this beautiful Apple monitor. So, let's hope it works. Oop, forgot to take my pill. Um, one sec. Okay, that's all taken care of. <laughs> what kind of pill was it? Use your imagination. Okay, now, boot it up. Whoa! Yo! It works! Oh, might help if I turn the monitor on. Might help if I plug the monitor into power. Oops! Okay, now that the monitor power is plugged in, let's do it for real. 
So far, so good. Hard drive's cranking away. Happy Mac, that's good. Oh, this is interesting. It's showing the extensions and everything here, but it's not showing a, like an actual boot screen. Hmm, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Okay. Um, mm, someone had windows open. Well, clean this up for now. Okay, black menu bar. That's interesting. Is that a setting? Because normally it's just white. This one's black. Hard disk, and it has the Adobe logo on it. Was this used by Adobe? or did the user just want to put an Adobe icon on there? Created September 17th, 1991, about a month-ish before this retail product actually went to consumers. About this Mac, System 7.1, okay, got that. How much RAM is in here? 20 megabytes, okay. So let's explore the system. Let's see if there's anything internally on here. We have a Clarisworks 2.0 folder, Jane's folder, Kathleen, Courtney, Rich, KidPix, Pamela, so I'm guessing there were multiple users on this system. Copyright Pro, never heard of this before. Management Science Associates based out of Pittsburgh. Okay, okay, so I'm not seeing anything else too crazy in the system folder. Let's move to these people's, I, I'm guessing like user folders. We'll go to Courtney's folder here, but it looks like we have a lot of Claris Works documents. Courtney resume, oh, interesting. I'm kind of curious, I want to poke at this, but uh, I won't show anything too sensitive. <laughs> I'm just trying to find out who might have owned this particular PVT system. Okay, so Pennsylvania, that copyright application was also from a company in Pennsylvania. Not sure if that's a coincidence or not. Chad's Ford Merchant Group is the license for Claris Works. Here's another thing that says Pennsylvania. So this was probably in Pennsylvania at one time. Okay, now this looks like a homework assignment because it says a teacher's name or something, but then it says PD7, I'm guessing period seven. Short story number six, March 7th, 1998. That was years after this computer came out. Maybe Apple just sold it at one time because they needed inventory, I, I don't know. Okay, well, let's take a look at another person's folder. Let's, let's do Rich. Yeah, another thing in Pennsylvania, submitted by Sage Resources. Hey, Sage, you're, you're inside my computer. That's so cool. How'd you get in there? And see, like, now we have, like, kid pics on here. So it's like, there's, like, university stuff, teacher stuff, but, like, you probably wouldn't be using kid pics at a university, so was this also used by a child? Like... So there's still one more hardware thing I want to test, but I just wanted to update you guys. I was poking around the file system, really trying to find more stuff. I was searching other keywords like classified or internal just to see if there's any internal documents on here. I even searched the word Apple just to look at all of those results and scrolled through the file system a bunch and I just couldn't find anything really exciting. So I'm sorry, there's nothing classified or special on the hard drive. Hardware wise, there's one more thing I want to try. So the eBay listing said it was untested. So I'm wondering, maybe they didn't really test it because they couldn't get it to turn on, and I'm wondering maybe the dead battery prevented the thing from turning on. Probably not, because old Macs can still boot with dead pram batteries, at least in my experience, or at least really low charged pram batteries, but I'm gonna swap the battery for fun, right? And just see if the system works with the old battery in it. All right, let's try it out. Still works. I guess the system always worked, just the eBay seller didn't want to take the time to test it, I guess. Want to crash it? There we go. <laughs> uh, I pressed the, that like developer interrupt switch on the front and when you do that, you get the nice sad Mac crash screen. That's always fun. I don't know, why is he dead? Maybe he's hungry. That's the code, see, food. You forgot to feed him. Your Tamagotchi died. Dead Tamagotchis aside, I would love to thank Linode for sponsoring this episode. And if you have an app or a website that you need to get off the ground, Linode has the infrastructure and the 24 seven support for you. And I don't know, maybe you need to write custom software for a dinosaur park, you know, like they were doing in the movie. You know, maybe they would have succeeded better if they had Linode, just saying. Linode offers out of box apps for game servers like TF2, CSGO, and even Minecraft. You can run your own virtual private network with OpenVPN, build an online application with Joomla's content management system, or build a video streaming site with a multitude of app choices. There's so much you can do with Linode's affordable Linux virtual machines. And to boot, they offer award-winning 24-7 technical support. To put it simply, if it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Visit linode.com slash computerclan and click one of the sign up buttons. And when you do that, we'll give you a 60 day $100 credit just for watching this episode. And also when you do that, you're supporting the computer clan. So thank you very much. So I hope you guys enjoyed checking out the Spike PVT prototype with me. It's a little bit of a bummer that we didn't see anything internal on the hard drive, but 
there's always next time. And feel free to subscribe for more tech episodes coming out every week. I love making episodes about rare and retro tech, new tech, and of course, scam tech. And hey, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Catch the crazy and pass it on. You know, all this talk about Jurassic Park made me want to watch the movie again, so let's enjoy it on Blu-ray. Oh.